Today is April the 23rd. Should we resist the government? Let's find out together as we study Mark 11, verses 13 to 17. So in the passage that we're looking at today, it's still Tuesday, Jesus is in Jerusalem. Um, verse 13, later, the leader sent some Pharisees and supporters of Herod to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. Teacher, they said, we know how honest you are. You're impartial. You don't play favorites. You teach the way of God truthfully. Now tell us, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or shouldn't we? It's interesting how the religious leaders worked. Uh, the religious leaders had the ear of both the Pharisees, who were actually part of the religious leaders, and followers of Herod because Herod made a show of honoring the Jewish uh, cult that took place in the temple. Pharisees and Herodians went to Jesus. They stood on two sides of the question that they asked. Should we pay taxes to Rome or not? The Pharisees would say no. The Herodians would say yes. What's interesting to me about that is the very fact that they were able to agree on who they hated. They both hated Jesus enough that they would approach him with the two sides of this question. Now, taxes were charged by Rome to all of the nations that Rome controlled. Israel fell under Rome and so it was liable to pay the Roman tax. There were three taxes that they had to pay. One was called a ground tax. They would have to give Rome a tenth of the grain that was raised in Israel and a fifth of the wine and the fruit that they could find. That would include fish, that would include animals. They had to give Rome a portion of the proceeds of what they spent the year doing. The second tax was an income tax. They would give to Rome 1% of their income. And then a third tax was called the poll tax. That was simply for the right to live in Israel. They would pay one day's wage, a denarius, each year, simply for the privilege of living in Israel. Now this is why a census would be taken, to know how much they should expect, Rome should expect, in tax from a given uh, region, from a given land that it governed. So the question is, how would Jesus answer? If he would side with the Herodians and say, yes, we should pay tax, the people would reject him. If he would side with the Pharisees and say, no, we shouldn't pay the Roman tax, then they could go to Pilate and say, Jesus is encouraging a rebellion. So how does Jesus answer? 15, Jesus saw through their hypocrisy and he said, why are you trying to trap me? Show me a Roman coin and I'll tell you. When they handed it to him, he asked, whose picture, whose name is stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well then, Jesus said, Give it back to Caesar. 
Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. It's his picture. It's his name. He must own it. Give it to him. But give to God what belongs to God. And his reply completely amazed him. Now, he responded to the question. He said, pay the tax. But he did it in such a way that they couldn't refute him. Should we resist the government? In this case, Jesus said no. Even the Roman government, even the government that in three days would crucify him, he said, pay the taxes. There comes a time to resist the government, but that time is not when we are inconvenienced by the government. If we're inconvenienced, Jesus said, pay the tax. That's not big enough to fight against the government. In fact, Paul says later, the government provides you services. It keeps you safe. It drives away the enemies. It exercises justice. Pay the tax. There comes a time to resist the government, but it's not over inconvenience. It's when the government stands against Christian values. We actually don't even see a case of that in the New Testament. Even the Roman government. Christians were told to pay the tax. Like and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Send your questions to questions at becomehope.com. We'll see you on Sunday when we will study the simple faith of children.